I'm Benjamin Ortiz Ulloa, and I'm here to talk about graphs with iGraphs in R. Um, the way I'm going to talk about this, I'm going to start off with actually explaining what a graph is. Um, then after talking about the basics of what a graph is, I'm going to actually kind of show how we can use the basics to actually create a recommendation system. Once we actually do that, we're going to then explain the uh, centrality measurements, which is actually kind of measuring impact within a, a network. Um, once we get that, we're going to use what we learned from the centrality measurements to extract key phrases from abstracts, and then we're going to go with some code, and then I'm going to finally show some code. Sorry. Um, okay, so what is that a graph? A graph is made up of things, which are also known as nodes and vertices, and these things are connected with relationships. Relationships are also known as links and edges. Um, links can have direction, um, and uh, nodes can have multiple links between them. So an instance of, a, a, of multiple nodes relationship is uh, in Twitter, I can follow somebody, but they don't necessarily have to follow me back. That's why relationships matter, and that's why direction matters within relationships. Um, these edges and nodes can have attributes, and these attributes can be visualized. Um, an important thing about attributes, especially with edge attributes, is to give you context about the network. So here is a dyadic relationship with just two people are involved. There's a person one, person two, and they like each other. But what does that mean in the grand scheme of things? Um, if we add a third person there, um, there's the idea of a friend of my friend is my friend. So then we see this is like these are two friends, part of a friend group, or the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So we know that these people actually fr are friends simply because they hate the same person. Um, so uh, once we actually kind of understand the whole relationships of a network, the whole the impact of actually knowing not just the dyadic relationship, but the, the, the relationship of the whole, we can start predicting things. So in an example, so uh, a group of people that actually liked each other, if two of them stopped liking each other, what happens with the rest of the relationship? Um, well, we don't know because this is a small network. But if once, once we actually learn that there's um, the, the person one and person two actually share a friend group and person three does not share that friend group, then we realize that once uh, person one is no longer friends with person two, there's a strong chance that person three is also, or person two is not going to be friends with person three anymore, simply because uh, on the same small logic that like the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Um, going back to uh, node attributes, node attributes can also be re represented as their own nodes. Um, this is called a bipartite graph. Um, so we're going to just call them orange nodes and gray nodes. So you can actually make indirect relationships by just following the, uh, the node that you're not interested in. So uh, we're interested in the orange nodes, so we're just going to follow the gray nodes, and we're going to find indirect relationships within the orange nodes. And within this, we can actually kind of derive the direct relationships. Um, that's uh, the basis of a lot of graph algorithms, and especially it's a basis of a lot of uh, um, uh, recommendation systems. So that's actually what we're going to follow through. With the logic of a... Uh, um, Di, uh, bipartite graphs, we're going to kind of make a, a recommendation system. And the, idea, the importance of recommendation system is kind of encapsulated in this, this quote. 35% of what consumers buy on Amazon and 75% of what users buy, uh, watch on Netflix come from product recommendations. So that's kind of a high impact tool to have under your belt. And we're going to go make a quick uh, and dirty recommendation system right now. So here, let's say we have a buyer who just bought an iPod. Um, what is an iPod? An iPod is an Apple product, and it's a musical product. What are other products in our inventory that actually has these attributes? You have the Apple computer, you have the Apple earbuds, and you have musical, ear, uh, musical earphones from Bose. Um, so these all share, relation, share something in common with the iPod, but only one of, them have a lot more, uh, one of them has a lot more in common than the others, and that's the Apple earbud. And since um, we aggregate all the uh, common attributes together to create a weighted uh, graph, and that weight is actually going to give us an idea of what we should recommend. So now we're actually going to recommend to the buyer who bought the iPod the Apple earbud simply off the uh, attributes that we have of all our items. That is a, a content based of recommendation. And there's another thing called collaborative filtering, which is uh, a different approach, which is we have a person on the left who bought an Apple computer and an iPod. Who are other people that bought these things? Who, who has bought an Apple computer? Who has bought an iPod? And now we can kind of find similar relationships between people. They're, the person on the bottom right is more similar to the person on the left simply because they bought the same, the more of the same products. And because of that, we can actually recommend the thing that the person on the bottom right has bought that the person on the left has not. And that's another way of actually recommending things. Um, so now we're going to move on to uh, uh, centrality measurements. Um, so to actually measure, uh, to actually kind of see the impact of a, a node, it's kind of important to actually understand what uh, a shortest path is. So from, from node A to node B, the shortest path is the combination of nodes and edges to get to the, uh, from node A to node B. Um, if we calculate the shortest pass of all nodes with every other node, 
we uh, can actually start counting the uh, betweenness measurement of each node. If you calculate all the pa shortest paths from, point from nodes to all the other nodes, you're going to see certain nodes sh like showing up more. Certain nodes are actually part of those shortest paths very often. And that's going to give somebody a high betweenness score, betweenness centrality score. And because direction really does, uh, understanding your graph, whether it's a directed graph or undirected graph, that, mean, that makes a big difference in your actual network. So here I highlighted blue nodes, which are the top five uh, between a centrality uh, measured nodes. Um, this is for a directed graph, and things are completely different if we do it with an undirected graph or we do it with an undirected measurement. Um, the same, and there's also something called a degree, which is simply the count of uh, edges of a node. So these are just counting all the, the inward facing nodes or inward facing uh, edges for each node. And these are the outward facing edges of a node. And these are just, if you don't really care about directing, just counting the, the total number of edges for a node. Um, and there's also closeness, which simply represents the, uh, the, how many, like the, how many nodes a, a certain node is closest to. And again, uh, the direction of the nodes, or the direction of the edges matter in calculating this. Uh, diff like if you care about inward nodes, outward nodes, or all nodes, you're going to get a different product or a different uh, score. And there's the idea of a hub. A hub. If you think about a website, a website will link to other websites. So a hub is considered a website that links to a lot of other websites. The, uh, the other side of that is an authority. So an authority is a website that has a lot of people linking to them. Um, so an example of a good a hub would be Google. Google can link you to a, almost everything. Um, not so many things will actually link to the Google's main page. Um, and there are other like, sites. So if I actually care about the DOD or the Air Force, um, I want to go to the Air Force's page. If I actually look up Air Force on Google, they're probably eventually going to point me towards the Air Force. And that's the idea of an authority. Uh, hubs point towards authorities. It's a recursive algorithm. And um, Google actually came up uh, with their own version of this, which instead of actually giving you two scores, a hub score and an authority score, they kind of consolidate it into its own thing, a page rank. And again, direction matters in this. Um, just a side note, uh, of the hub scores and authority scores, if you do that with an undirected uh, graph, it's the same. Um, so page rank is uh, kind of the basis of a lot of other like, algorithms. A lot of people play with page rank for their own like, use cases. So we're going to actually use page rank to actually abstract key phrases from my own abstract. This is my own abstract for the talk that I'm giving right now. I'm not going to read it because it's long and I don't have that attention span. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to come up with an algorithm called text, uh, text rank. Um, and this basically uses page rank on a, uh, a, a graph that is based off of a text. So, and then once we actually kind of put, like run the, what, we're going to create a graph, tech, uh, a graph of text. We're going to remove everything that's not a noun and an adjective. We're going to run the page rank algorithm, and we're going to keep only the top third uh, page ranked vertices. And that's, and then we're only going to, we're going to, that's going to give us a um, phrase. So just an idea of what a text graph looks like. So if you think about like uh, the word order in a sentence, a word then another word, then another word. That's actually how we're going to do that. The relationship is proximity. So first this word, then this word, then this word. And that's the first sentence of my abstract. So if we actually run the algorithm I just explained to you um, on the actual full abstract, these are the actual key concepts that come out. Graph traversal, which is absolutely a key, uh, concept that I care about, and other practical applications. In my abstract, I actually talk about um, like, like network analysis is so much more than just Twitter data. Like you don't necessarily care about social network analysis. And uh, you'll notice that the D on the slide rep, uh, actually represents a directed text rank. So a directed text rank just uses page rank as a directed thing. And just to show that it's, it's actually worth playing around with your data and playing around with network stuff once you have it, um, I'm going to show you the undirected version of that. A lot of people actually suggest using undirected stuff, but I, I, I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, so these are different concepts that come out with the same, with the same data. Um, but just using a different, uh, different type of page rank. This is using the uh, undirected one. And now we have social media as a concept. We have powerful algorithms. And uh, we also have data sets and real world as a concept. And I did that for everybody else who's on this panel. And uh, Miguel actually talks about um, engineering task and uh, engineering toolkit, AZTK, and Spark clusters. And that's actually kind of shown in the actual data. And this is actually really cool when you're, when you're pulling up text data from abstracts, this only needs a single abstract. You're not comparing it to every single other abstract in your corpus. You just care about that one text. And that's really pretty cool, I think. Um, and so like, again, I did this for everybody else. Um, so we have the next speaker is going to be talking about C the CV project and uh, spatial scales, um, as well as complex data and neural networks. And then the final speaker will talk about uh, principal components 
and quick visualizations and dimension reduction. So that's kind of a neat way to actually kind of like, without actually reading a full text, you can kind of like pull the concepts from it. And I think that's really neat because I don't actually like reading. Um, <laughs> So uh, now I'm going to get into the code stuff, and I'm sorry, this is going to go by really fast. I'm not going to do it justice, but just um, the takeaway is every, you can do everything in iGraph, and it's awesome. Anyway, oh, awesome. Um, so this is, a, a typical, this is a Star Wars data set from DeepFire. This is, a, a, like, in, if you're familiar with tidyverse uh, concept, this is a wide data set. We want to convert this into a long data set, and this is uh, the idea of an edge, uh, an edge list. So it's, the first column will always represent where the edge is coming from. The second column will always represent where the, the edge is coming, going to. And anything, any subsequent column is the, an attribute, an edge attribute. And it's not necessary that you have a node list, but if you want to actually give a node attribute to your nodes, you're going to, come up, you're going to need to come up with a, a node list as well, which is just uh, one The first column has to be the name of the node, and everything, every subsequent column is the attributes. Um, and the way we actually, once we actually come up with a, uh, an edge list and a node list, we're going to come up with a graph. Uh, we're going to create a graph by using iGraphs, graph from data frame. Um, and we're going to make a, a, a directed graph. Um, and just a, uh, do you see my mouse right now? You see? Uh, okay, so just a heads up. This D is going to either be U for undirected or D for directed, name for named. Um, if, this, if our edges had a weight, this would be W. And because we have like two different kind of stuff, we have a, um, we have a character and then their, their attributes, um, this is going to be a by graph. So those are the two different nodes. There are character nodes and not character nodes. Um, or uh, this could be bipartite graph. Anyway, so uh, the idea is that you can, also, you can also go from a graph to a data frame by using uh, like as data frame function. And that will give you either an edge list or a node list, depending on what you actually want to pull out there. Um, and then once you actually get a graph uh, going, you can actually explore it um, by uh, using two different functions. There's the v function, which actually pulls up a vector of vertices, and the e function, which actually pulls up an e, a vector of edges. Um, and you can query these things by simply using square bracket notation. Uh, and if you have a name graph, you always have a name attribute that could query. So this, this up, up here, I'm just typing, uh, like, uh, actually this is like an edge. I'm querying like all edges with the type has film. So that's just basically a person to a film edge. So those are links that are connecting person to film. Um, and then we can actually, uh, so the cool thing about edges is that edges are made up of our assembly connections between nodes. So you can also pull up the nodes that they're connecting. And those are two functions themselves. Those are the tail of, which is like where the, in a directed graph, it's where the edge is coming from, and head of, which is the, where the edge is going to. Um, and that's gonna be important later when we actually kind of comp consolidate information into a single thing, uh, or in a single edge uh, attribute. And uh, so the E function and the V function actually provide you with uh, vertices, or a, a list of nodes, or a list of edges. Um, they don't provide you with a graph, and that's actually kind of a key concept, because like, once you actually create a new graph, it's a new graph, and you can't use the vertices or edges from a previous one. So that's actually a, a neat thing right now. Um, so I'm subtracting edges from this graph, um, edges that are like not Luke Skywalker, and uh, the, uh, just a, a little like, kind of like a heads up, if you want to keep edges that you care about, that means you have to remove edges that you don't care about. And that's why I'm subtracting all the edges that do not have Luke Skywalker in there. That's just like, a nice little like, thing to think about when you're playing with graphs. Um, so uh, again, when you, when you create a new graph, you can't necessarily use the edges of a separate graph. And the edges, and the edges from the previous graph that you just subtracted from is a different graph. So what that means is that you're gonna have to pipe it. And the cool thing about McGritter is that it provides you with like a whole pipe functionality where like, uh, if you just put it into curly brackets, a, 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 a dot actually represents the graph that you just created. So it can kind of pipe information, create like new vertices or new edges and keep it going without actually kind of having to like do a lot of like, uh, like saving new vertice names or whatever. Um, uh, and also, you can assign vertices, you could assign attributes to vertices um, simply by using dollar notation, dollar, um, dollar notation to, and like the, the assignment arrow. Um, that's gonna be important simply because as you, as you move forward exploring your graph, you kinda wanna put new information in there like, okay, who, okay now that we filtered down this graph, what is it connected to? How many people are is it connected to? Remember, degree is a measurement that you can calculate as you go. Um, and then finally, uh, like another really important thing is projections. Remember the, bi uh, the bipartite graph that I showed you earlier today? Um, that bipartite graph, um, to actually do the indirect connections, it's simply a function called uh, bipartite project. Um, and like, once you filter down the, the, the nodes that you want, so like I filter this down to just people and uh, movie vertices, you can create by uh, you can create a, a, another graph where like the you gotta have like you have a graph where it's like people to people connected by and the edges are the actual aggregates of people that they share 
or you're going to have people-to-people -people, uh, graph where the, the edges are the, the aggregate of the movies that they share. Um, and this is an example of like, what happens when you actually kind of uh, aggregate the people together to create like, movie connections. And you're going to see that the, the new trilogy, or the, the Phantom Menace, the Attack of the Clones, and the Revenge of the Sith are uh, the movies that actually share the most characters. Uh, if we go the other way and get all the character connections, we get this giant mess of a hairball. Um, and like, this is like, a good test case. And, like, so what do we do when we have a hairball? We don't want to keep it as a hairball because you can't really analyze it. Um, so what we do is we actually kind of like reduce it. So if you actually take a look at the, so this is just a summary of the edge weights. Remember, like it's just a vertice or just a, a, a vector. You, whatever you can do with a vector in R, you can do to a vector of vertices. I'm actually kind of calculating the weights. And it turns out almost every character is connected to another character with only just one movie. So that means there's a lot of, in my interpretation, that means I don't really care about all these people. So I'm going to subtract, I'm going to remove all the connections that have less than, um, like, I care about trilogy, so I want to remove everybody that has less than three movies in between them. And then we get this. It's filtered down, it's a little bit more manageable, and if we, couldn't, if we run the page rank on it, we're going to find that R2D2, C3PO, and Obi-Wan Kenobi are considered the most, like, one of the more like, significant people of this film. But there's two people that are missing, Darth Vader and Anakin Skywalker. Those people are essentially the same person, um, and they are absolutely central. So uh, they are in this graph. What we need to do is we actually can consolidate it. And like once you actually consolidate, once you do disambiguation, you change the data, you're actually going to change um, the actual outcome of the graph. So if we run the page rank after we actually filter down, uh, if we actually consolidate Anakin Skywalker as uh, Darth Vader, you're going to find out Anakin Skywalker is now one of the central characters. So again, like your, your data absolutely matters. Cleaning your data changes everything. One small change to your network will change everything. Um, anyway, so on the final note, um, so. This is like a really neat thing. So, so remember earlier I said that uh, edges are made of two vertices, um, and you could pull information from those vertices. So here, um, I got the degree. I got the, so the weight is the number of movies two people share. I divided that weight by the actual total number of movie a person is in. So the tail is, so on the first uh, row, you have Luke Skywalker and C-3PO. So they share four movies together, and that's 80% of all Luke Skywalker movie. And that's only 66% of all C3PO movies. So that's, I mean, take what you will, but that's actually going to be like really important depending on your analyses. Like especially if you care about citation analysis, something like that, that's going to be like, oh, so this person actually is like getting more out of this relationship than the other person. And you're going to see like actual equality. So you have Luke Skywalker and Chewbacca in the same number of movies together. Um, and that's pretty cool. Anyway, um, this is awesome. Like graphs are amazing. They're so much fun. And I can't do it just in, just in 20 minutes. So I'm just going to like point you at awesome people. Um, this is Katya Ognanova. She's a hero. She has some great tutorials, and I highly recommend her page. You need to go to her page and go through all of her tutorials. You'll learn so much. Um, and then you have these, uh, you have Neo4j and Tigerpop. So Kelvin Lawrence is writing this thing on Gremlin graph traversals, um, and that's uh, a, a, a traversal language for a, a graph database called Tinkerpop. And you also have Neo4j, which has its own uh, database, and they use a cipher query language. And those guys inspired me a lot in the whole concept of actually like a um, traversing graphs and actually learning things about knowledge graphs. And finally, um, as like a selfish plug, I have my own workshop materials. I gave a workshop in EROM. Um, I need to edit it hard because I've, I've learned so much in just two months and like a lot of things have changed. But uh, I highly recommend if you actually want to play with iGraph um, in not necessarily a social uh, network analysis type of way, but actually like as a knowledge graph kind of way, um, take, a, take a visit. And I'm done. Well, thank you. Have fun. Like <laughs>